Hi, it's Carlos from RC Advisor. I wanted to talk today about soldering. It's something that we all have to do. It's like all of the motors that I, I have ever bought, a lot of the time they've come with the connectors but they're not soldered on. So I have no choice but to do the soldering. And batteries, most of the time, I, I also have to solder the connector on. And the key to a good soldering job is preparation you know, and, and having the right tools. And the, and the first tool that you need to think about is having a good, hefty, soldering iron and this is a Weller 40 watt I got it years ago prior from Radio Shack and when you're when you're soldering a connector you need a lot of power because that heavy chunk of metal on the connector is going to just draw the heat away and if, if the soldering iron is not big enough it's, it's going to take forever but even worse it's probably going to melt or any plastic or insulation that's around it because it just takes a lot of time for the heat to develop and the key to a soldering iron is keeping it clean and I'm, I'm constantly keeping it, wiping it and making sure that it's clean as I work and this is a, uh, a sponge and, it's, and make sure that it's wet you know a lot of the time people will use it dry and that's the wrong way to use it but you also don't want it soaking so that every time you touch it you, you're gonna have water all over the place but just have it wet Make sure you use distilled water because otherwise the minerals are going to build up and it's going to create a different type of problem. And this, this stuff here looks like steel wool but it's not. It's, it's made specially to help you with soldering. But it's a soft metal, I don't know, maybe brass or something. But it's a soft metal that you can use to wipe your, your tip on. And, uh, and also this is, this is called tip thinner and cleaner. I also got it from Radio Shack. And I've had this for years. It just pretty much lasts forever. But just don't be shy. You know, just take the tip, and you know it's just nice, nice and clean. And and that's what you want to see. You know, you want if you have a, a dirty tip, it's just you know take you a, a long time to heat up the parts because the the oxidation acts like an, an insulator. Okay, and right along with the soldering iron, I have this stand which I think is absolutely critical. I don't know how you can solder without something like this because you just, you just run out of hands. And it's very flexible. I also got it from Radio Shack, but you can adjust it any which way. It's got these two alligator clips on the end. And I, I basically don't apply any heat until I'm 100% happy with the preparation. You know, everything looks good. It's holding the parts, touching each other, but without too much pressure. And heat is the last step, okay? And and by the time I apply the heat, I'm pretty much guaranteed success because everything is perfect already. And a lot of these stands will come with a magnifying glass. I, I hardly ever use this one. So that's something you can skip. You know, I wouldn't spend the money on that unless you know you unless you know you're gonna need it. As as far as the solder. This is resin core. Uh, this one says 40% tin, 60% lead. This one says 60-40. And you know, this one is, is fairly thin. This one is a little bit thicker, but you don't need a big heavy piece of, of solder. And you want resin core because it's gonna have a flux built in, which is gonna help clean the, keep the parts clean as you work. So that, that's important. Uh, you need a, set of wire strippers and you can use an exacto knife to strip the insulation but it doesn't for at least for me it doesn't work real well so this this is real handy to have i i actually use a separate set of pliers for cutting my wire just because it's a lot better than that one make sure you have a uh, decent quality wire and you know definitely you don't want to use solid wire because it's just not very flexible and eventually it's going to break but you also don't need the real high count multi-strand because it's expensive. So you know you just want some nice decent quality uh, multi-strand wire, and you know just don't skimp on that. But also you don't need to splurge and, and spend a bundle. And the, the the last thing that you need to to make sure you do a good job with the uh, with the soldering is heat shrink tubing. I mean years ago I used to use the electrical tape to, and cover up my joints. But now, now everything that I do, I just put heat shrink tubing on it, and it just looks, you know, it's easier and it looks much better, and it's probably gonna last longer. And I got this assortment from uh, Harbor Freight, 
like five bucks I got it years ago and you can tell I still have a bundle left so you know and it's nice to have an assortment because you never know exactly what size you're gonna need and be be generous with the size you don't want something that's just a little bit bigger than the size of the wire because don't forget that the connector is gonna be on there too so you, you need to comfortably be able to put both of them in there and you can use a soldering iron to shrink it but a heat gun it is much better because you, you're not going to leave any marks and it's going to be very even so use a heat gun to shrink it after you're done and I, I've got I mean I have bought heat shrink tubing from different places this is Tony brand this is an assortment also from Harbor Freight that I got and I mean the reason why I've got so much is because you never know exactly which size you're going to need and this is like real small stuff that I don't even know where I got this from but it's nice to have to have an assortment and the reason why the alcohol is here is just to make sure you know not only does the soldering iron have to be clean but make sure the parts are very clean and if there's any doubt about it just use the alcohol and wipe it down and um, again you know position everything once you're happy you want to apply the heat to the part and you have the solder, solder melt onto the part rather than melt, melt the solder with the soldering iron you don't want to do that and um, it should go pretty smoothly. I, I, I tend to have good luck you know, with, with the right preparation. So I hope that you found this helpful. Till next time.